Good evening guys, good afternoon, depends on the time you're watching this. I am Foxy, and now I'm on my own this week. We've had a bit of bad news this week. Rob has woken up with a beard. So, before you all start saying that I thought he was a guy, it, the truth is it's Roberta. So, I mean, imagine waking up with a beard there, full beard there, 22 year old girl. So he's been in hospital all week. Um, hopefully he'll make an appearance next week, I don't know. So, I've got no one really to have a bit of like, you know, what do you think, what do you think? So I'll do it all on my own. So I'm Foxy, that was Rob, Roberta, whatever you want to call her, him. Preview, so Nottingham Forest at home. I know what you're all going to say, the return of Karanka. I know everybody thinks they know what's going to happen. We know how we play it. But that's my job to break it down for you. I'm going to do that as best I can. I'm not going to talk about the previous games. That's not my, that's not my job to do that, thank God. Um, Although it's been an appalling week, I think we'd all agree. So, Forrest. Turned us over when we played them there, early on in the season. I think you'll all remember it. A Sombolonga should have had about seven that day. Please don't write in. Please don't write in. But he should have scored a, he should have scored a bag full. He didn't. So we get beat 2-1. But it's a different Forrest team to when, to when we played them in the, uh, in the summer. Obviously, I had a different manager then, the Warburton. So they brought Karanka in around January time. Um, they just beaten Arsenal 4-2, I think, in the FA Cup. Really cracking result, put Arsenal out of the cup. And then from then, they, were being, they didn't really do much in, in, in kind of the next month. They had a win, they had a couple of defeats. They went to Wolves, actually, and beat Wolves 2-0. Then they got beat at home by Preston. They got beat at home by Hull. Uh, they then got knocked out of the FA Cup by Hull. And then just recently, they've been seven unbeaten. They'd only scored in three of those games, though. Um, Four, four without a goal. Now, their last, their last result was Millwall away, which was 2-0. And by all accounts, they were quite in the game. From what I've seen, they had quite a lot of shots, quite a lot of possession, which we all know is, is, is a Karanka style anyway. But again, I'm going to talk in, in a bit more detail about that. Although I don't want to patronise you guys. You all know what Karanka does. But um, So, 2-0 away. Usual sort of for Karanka formation, 4-2-3-1. Jack Colback, Ben Watson, defensive midfielders. Um, then he's played with a guy called Barry Mackay out wide on the left, Joel Lolly on the other side. Um, and what he's actually been doing as well, from what I can see, is he's been playing the left footer on the right hand side, and the right hand side he's been playing the left footer. So he's all about Karanka, you know, he likes that, doesn't he? He did it with Borough quite a bit, playing people with the wrong foot on the opposite side, all about cutting in, doesn't really like to get the whip. But they're a team in trouble, Forrest. You know, the irony is, is that Karanka came in to stop the rot, which he has kind of done. Um, they didn't want to go down, obviously. Now they're kind of languishing mid-table. Now, I don't think the bottom three are going to affect them. But from listening to Forest fans and doing a bit of research and looking into the team in a, in a bit more depth, they're kind of undecided as where they feel, where they stand with Karanka, whether, 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 whether they actually think that he can progress the club or not. Like I say, they haven't scored in four. Now, that, that sort of unbeaten in seven sounds really good until you had that stat in. No goals in the last four games. He's changed it round quite a lot. He's tried. Velios up front, by all accounts, is a terrible player. You know, and I'm sorry for any Forest fans watching. My, my aim here is not just to be... Um, it's not just to slag your team off. You know, I, I think you would all agree that Velios has looked terrible. Tomlin, who they brought in, who was a, a Karanka signing. We all know about him, guys. Started, started his first couple of games really well, but from what I can gather, the guy's put weight on. He's whinging a lot. He doesn't want to be in games. He doesn't want the ball. Um, they also signed, like I said, Colback, uh, or Jack Colback, however you want to, whatever you want to call him, in the, in the window, which for me is a good signing. He's been around, hasn't he? He's, he's a player that we all know about, but he was a good signing. But from, again, looking at it, a lot of Forest fans are asking why isn't Brig cutting that team because he seems to be a little bit more of a... Um, a bit of a, a bit more of a, a bit more passer, a bit hold onto the ball a bit more, a bit more of an intelligent player. Again, taking nothing away from Colback, but it just seems as if what the Forest fans are seeing now is the kind of the same sort of scenario we saw as Borough fans. And I know before you all start saying, look, if Karanka was here now and this, that, and the other, if Karanka could have got the signings, and again, you know, but he didn't, did he? And I think that what we saw under Karanka was a guy that couldn't evolve the club. 
I know I'm going to be quite unfashionable saying this, but it's just a realistic view of what that Borough team was. Let, let's not let your memories be polished and look back and think it was awesome times under Karanka. It was a workman-like team under Karanka. Well, yes, we had a foundation. Yes, we had a really good defence. But that'll only get you so far in this game, as we know. Forest fans are seeing that now. They're talking about, we haven't really got anything to play for, so why can't he take the shackles off this team and experiment a little bit? Why can't he play with two up front? I mean, we all know that. How many times have we asked that question? Will he play with two up front? Especially in your home games. So, what do we expect? Well, I kind of, as I said at the top of the show, we all kind of think we know what to expect. Short passes, possession football. Not much creation, because... As we've mentioned there, if, if Tomlin isn't doing a job, they really haven't got much going on for them. We've also got a guy in there called Barry Mackay, Scottish. Likes to play on the left, does most of his damage on the left, but he's also played on the right a lot of the season as an attacking midfielder. And he's scored goals and, and he's had assists um, on both sides. But from looking at games that he's played in and also talking to Forest fans, he's quite a temperamental player. And from what I can see... Karanka doesn't really fancy him very much. But again, we've had that same scenario, and I'm certainly not comparing these two guys, but creative outlets is something that Karanka's had a problem with. Didn't want to play Triori too much, didn't trust Triori too much, and although that was his signing, Ramirez was always the man. Tomlin, when he was there, got a game. Although, as we all know again, as I've just mentioned, Tomlin's a two-game wonder. He'll start with a burst and then he just wants to go and have fish and chips and get fatter and fatter and fatter. Which is kind of, without being like crass about it, it's kind of... He's kind of where he's at now. He's got a contract, he's settled, and he just doesn't really want to move. He's not involved in games. So, the other danger man, as I've mentioned, is a guy called Dowell and Mackay. Mackay is a talented player. He came from Rangers, I think it was a million pound. Temperamental kid. He's only young, but on his day, he's good. From what I can see and what I can gather, he was kind of taking a dip under Warburton. But, as I've just said, Karanka doesn't fancy too many outlets, too many creative players. He's tried Cash in there, who looks like a good player. Um, young kid again, English, he's scored goals, but he hasn't, he's been coming off the bench and scoring goals, but he's a midfield centre. Again, from what I can gather, they haven't really got any pace in the team. They haven't really got any creation if Tomlin doesn't do anything or Mackay doesn't do anything. Velios looks garbage. They've tried Daryl Murphy up front, who kind of started the season pretty well. And he's done nothing, nothing at all. Mackay, Dowell, Tomlin have played well in patches, but they're not doing it. There's no consistency there. Now, is that a Karanka thing? He's been there long enough now. Is that a Karanka thing? Or is it just that he doesn't want these players playing for him? Um, but like I say, he brought Tomlin in. But I don't know what he was expecting. So does that explain kind of where Karanka's at? That he'll bring in a player to try and rely on in a difficult position to get you out of trouble? When he didn't really do it enough for us. I think Tomlin, Tomlin's game, game of the century was a Man City away for us in the FA Cup. And we all thought, wow, here we go. And that was it. That was it. Lights went out, electricity ran out, and we didn't see anything else from the guy. And yet karanka has gone and brought him into this team. So, as a Forest fan, I'd be worried. Now, before I've done my research on this team, and I just had the Karanka in my head of Middlesbrough, what I did think was, A, he's not going to come back to the Riverside and want to get beat. So they're probably going to really show themselves up. And also, he's a guy that can get a point. And as I've just said, I'm not going to talk about the two games the other day. But we all know, and again, let's be realistic. If we stop a diamond tree or eight, we've got nothing. As we saw against Burton, as we kind of saw against Wolves, although he did have flashes. If people do the job and you've got a bit of pace, you can kind of keep this guy out of the equation. Now, I'm not going to start talking about that, or I'd love to stand here for another hour and talk to you about why, why we haven't been coached as a team, why the players aren't improving under Pulis, why we've only got one outlet still when there's other players in that team that could do something, and especially if everybody's going to chase Triori about why isn't Pulis using that. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'll stop there. So we'll come back to Forrest. They have plenty of shots in the game. Let's take Millwall, the last game. Plenty of shots in the game, but a lot of them are 20 yards and out. They don't really get in the box much. They, they, they've got wingers, but they don't really play with width. The guys like to cut in. He'll swap them over at some point during the game, and we may see, we may see Dowell on one side, or Lolly, or, 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 or Mackay on the other. But realistically, he doesn't want to play with width. Maybe that's because they haven't got anyone in the box as well. So, for me, this is an average team. 
This is a team that's struggling still. They're not guaranteed safety just of yet, but I think that there's three worse teams in the, in the league than them, so I think they will be safe. But they're a team in kind of turmoil. They need four or five players, maybe six. Like I said, there's no real creativity. There's no real pace. They like to keep hold of the ball. So realistically, Triori should frighten the hell out of them. And I'm, I'm sorry to keep talking about this guy, but he's the only real player that I see with star quality, apart from Bamford, who can actually do something. And again, they're the link. That's the link. We all know that. We see it all the time. Although, to be fair, a somber longer scoring against Burton was a positive. I'd like to see him maybe start with two up front. I doubt it's going to happen. I'd love to see a somber longer and Bamford start up front, but I doubt it's going to happen. So, my point of explaining all the Karanka stuff is because, like I say, before I've researched this properly, I would have thought they guaranteed a point, well, especially with the way we've been playing, but I don't think that's the case. I'm going to stick my neck out on the line and say 2 0. I really do believe it's going to be 2 0. Triore and maybe Ayala, they're not they're quite susceptible off set pieces, they're quite they're quite weak on the wings, they're not very good once they go 1-0 down, they struggle to get back into games. We're very good when we when we score a goal. Every time we've gone in the lead, we've kept it. I think it's 13 or 14 times this season when we've gone 1-0 up. We'll stay and we'll keep the lead. I'm not jinxing anybody, so again, don't jump on me. A negative, a negative mind will create all that. A positive mind won't. So there's no such thing as jinxes in my in my vocabulary. So I'm going 2-0, Traore and Ayala, set piece, and we roll on. What I'm going to say though, guys, is we'll try and be positive again. There's no point in being negative about it. It is what it is. We are where we are. Let's see if we can stumble into a playoffs and not enjoy a doubt at Wembley, because we probably aren't going to get there. But why not waste some money, Borough fans, and think we might be able to get promoted? What I would say to you guys, though, if you want to have a doubt at Wembley, go and see Tottenham. So... One other thing, if you want to win two season tickets this season, you need to get and be one of, our, one of our subscribers. You need to like, share, subscribe on YouTube, on Twitter for a chance to win two of these tickets. It's going to be championship football, guys. I'm sorry to say that. If it is premiership football, I'll be watching with one eye. So get on board, get, in, get involved, and let's get, let's get two uh, season tickets won. So I've been Foxy. This has been a preview show. Peace out, guys, whoever you are, wherever you are, to the best fans in the world, up the borough.